Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Finally, the Dart Zone Review-a-thon is over. It's been a few days since I've been able to actually just use a Nerf Blaster happily. And to celebrate not having to deal with Dart Zone Blasters for a little while, I've decided to treat myself to an absolute classic of the highest caliber. This is the N-Strike Firefly. <laughs> So the Firefly is a 2005 release out of Hasbro in the End Strike series, marking it as one of the earlier releases in that series, as well as one of the most iconic blasters released in that series, even though no one talks about it, or really seems to remember it outside of integration potential. Which is incredibly sad, because this is one of the coolest blasters I think Nerf has ever made, for a few reasons. But we'll get into everything in due time, but first we gotta start out with the design. Guys, I, I don't really know what to say. I really don't know. This is one of the few times where I go to talk about design and I just literally have no words. Because, just look at it. Just look at this thing. Appreciate it. Appreciate the myriad of complicated and well-designed well, well created angles. The complex geometry of all these little segments. This, this chaotic machine looking like gunmetal gray, glossy painted, beautifully designed, perfect, perfect in every way. As soon as I got this blaster in the mail and I opened it up and I saw this magnificent, undefeatably wonderful looking shell, it immediately jumped to my top one spot of favorite designs ever. This is my favorite design ever made by Hasbro, by any company, anyone, any Dart Zone Blaster, Busby, Zuru, or anything, none of them come anywhere near this blaster's appearance. It is the best blaster to look at I have ever seen. I absolutely love the way this thing looks in every single way. And the first thing that you're going to say when you first get this blaster is, HOLY CRAP! THAT'S MASSIVE! It's an 8 dart revolver. Look how big this thing is! It's so big that you can't use it as a sidearm. You can barely use it as a secondary. This is a primary size blaster. Put a raven next to it. It completely dwarfs the raven. I can comfortably hide the raven behind it because of how massive the firefly is. Holy crap, is this blaster big. Let's get onto the ergonomics. The Firefly features a main grip, a stock, and a top prime. It doesn't really feature a cheek rest because of the way this top prime works, but more on that in just a second. First of all, the main grip. A lot of people had some complaints about this main grip being small. I don't understand what they're talking about. This is like, yeah, not only is this the best looking blaster in my collection, it's the most comfortable in my opinion, especially with this main grip. It is amazing. This finger troil is just the right size for my finger to fit in. I can imagine it would be a little bit uncomfortable if you had bigger fingers than mine, but regardless of that, this space down here is plenty big enough to get two fingers on. It's plenty big enough to get three fingers on. If this was the grip right here, it would still be really comfortable, but with all this added extra space, it's just perfect. The details right here don't get in the way. They're not intrusive or anything. And this big angular comfortable section in the back is just so nice and pleasant on your hand. This is how you do a thumb hole stock properly. It's not alienating to a big hand besides maybe this finger troil right here, but it's not uncomfortably big either, like something like the Forker Phoenix 2.0's grip. It's absolutely amazing. As for the stock, the most famous part of this blaster, known for being the best stock that Nerf has ever created, Oh yeah, it absolutely is. This stock is freaking fantastic. It's so large and just comfortable. Like the angle of this is so well designed. There's so much care put into the design of this stock as well as it being the absolute perfect freaking pull in order to brace comfortably against your shoulder. The top prime up here is also geniusly designed. It's not very big. It's actually pretty small. 
but it has this like lip thing on the back, this backstop that keeps you from having to slip off or grab onto it too tightly. So that means that you can comfortably just pull this right back and then it's got a spring return to reach the four position like this. So how does this blaster work? If you have had a history of epilepsy or seizures from photosensitive lights, click this button. Go to this timestamp right here because this blaster features a strobe effect that might prove to trigger something and I don't want anybody to get hurt. So with all that said, I will demonstrate this blaster's functionality in three seconds. This blaster is an eight dart revolver. So you load in eight darts up at the front, but before you prime it or do anything else, you've got a little switch right here. So once you turn that on, this little light will turn on and you'll hear like a wee sound come from inside the blaster. So you take this, you pull it back and you let go and then you can fire once. You see that? Let's do it again. Let me try and explain what you're seeing. This blaster features a muzzle flash effect that was never seen again after this blaster's initial release. So if you look inside of the cylinder, you can see that it's transparent, but the reasoning for that is that inside there is a metal cog-shaped setup that is fully reflective on all sides. And up in the top up here, the reason why this top end is so big is because there's a super bright light bulb, similar to what you'd see on a camera flash. When you pull the trigger, that bulb flashes on and off super fast, lighting up the barrel that is on top incredibly bright for a very small split second. So if you were using the included darts that this blaster came with, which were white and glowed in the dark, when you fired it, whatever dart was in the top would glow for just long enough so that you could see it fly through the air in the dark. And by the time it hit its target, the glow would have faded and it would have gone back to being a dark dart. Oh my god, is this thing amazing! But it's also super duper fiddly and there's a reason why there's so few of these that work. I have two of them. The yellow one's muzzle flash works perfectly. The blue one's has burnt out. Like a lot of people's have burnt out. And I mean a lot of people's have burnt out. These muzzle flash effect, like these little light bulbs that are inside of the blasters are extraordinarily sensitive to the point where if there's any form of slight over voltage, even using something like Duracell Optimums or Energizer Maxes could be enough to cause these lights to burnt out. And they're very hard to maintenance because they're similar to what you'd see on a camera flash rather than being just like an LED light or something that you would see on a modern Nerf blaster like the Gowerhorn or the limited Mandalorian rifle. And most people who get these blasters that enjoy the light up effect would probably remove that and replace it with an LED that just has an on and off switch to turn on and off. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, the muzzle flash thing and the way that this thing just lights up and turns off super fast and the small whirring noise that it makes after you do that every single time is so unbelievably cool that I would do anything in my power to keep this working if it ever burnt out. I love that so much. There's nothing else like it. It's so cool. But that's not the only issue that people have faced with this thing. Mine, I have a perfect demonstration of this issue, which I will show you right now. So take a look at the front muzzle ends of these two blasters. I'm going to pull the triggers now. Do you see the issue? That one is perfectly lined up. This one is not. These blasters have extremely sensitive cylinder rotation mechanisms. And probably as soon as I'm done filming this video, I'm gonna open these blasters up and switch out these cylinder rotation mechanisms because I wanna keep the yellow one in its working order. I don't really care about this blue one too much since I plan on integrating it into something anyway. I, I'm thinking about getting another one of these blasters anyway because oh my God, oh my God. Oh, it's so cool. It's just, I, I just wanna punch things with it. I just wanna do this. It's so freaking badass. I love this blaster. Oh. It's fine, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. This'll wipe off. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll just, yeah, it's, it's, it's not like that. It, it doesn't matter, I'll worry about that later. But it, you guys get the point. There's just, oh my God, there's so much to like about this blaster. But regardless, how is the trigger and the smoothness of operation? Well, first of all, the priming handle. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's just so good. It's so smooth. And you can't even tell when it catches. Like, 
you can't even tell. It's such a buttery smooth catch and it's a reliable catch too. Like it's a very nice feeling setup with the, the freaking priming handle. The return is super smooth. And if you didn't notice, you can deprime this blaster, making it one of the only blasters that Nerf has ever made that you can deprime that isn't like a T-pull thing. And just to prove it, here's the other one. You can deprime this one too. What about the trigger? Do you guys remember when I did my Maverick review and I stated that this was my favorite trigger in history and I could stop doing this through the entire review? Ladies and gentlemen, I have really been struggling to not do this through the entire freaking review. This trigger is better than the Mavericks in every single way. It is not only a smoother and even more satisfying pull in with an even more satisfying cylinder rotation mech connected to it, but unlike the Mavericks, it is actually rounded on the front. It's a very, very smooth trigger pull in. It is an incredibly good feeling trigger to the point where I like I wanna put this trigger on other blasters. I wanna figure out how to get this freaking trigger on other blasters. I don't know how, I don't know if we've, something like that would even be possible, but like, oh my gosh, it's so good. It's so good. I have no complaints with this trigger at all, except that is a very, very tight trigger guard. And if you got too big of index fingers, I can imagine people getting their index fingers stuck within this trigger guard. It's not a problem for me. It doesn't seem to be a problem with very many people but it is still worth pointing out. That's probably going to be my biggest complaint with this blaster through the entirety of this video. With all that said, let's see it fire. I will be shooting the blue one, not just because it's got a better cylinder rotation mech, but because I'm not going to be displaying the muzzle flash any further, just in case I hurt people who are photosensitive, and because, I don't know, the blue one's more tactical. Let's get into it. Not to mention it has a dart storage. It doesn't hold modern darts well at all. This just happens. All right, let's get into it. That wasn't supposed to happen. There we go. Thank you. Speed load. Speed load. Speed load. Speed load. Tactical jump. Oh my god. There, I finished the cup pyramid. So what mod potential does the Firefly have? This is probably the part of the video where you're expecting me to say, it's an end strike blaster, it's got a reverse plunger, so the best thing you can do is really integrate it, which is what a lot of people have done. Incorrect. This blaster has a direct plunger system, as well as an incredibly, incredibly robust catch mechanism. The plunger tube is big. I've opened this blaster up. It's got a beefy plunger tube in there. There is a lot of modding that you could do with a basic Firefly without changing anything out, just fidgeting with it, giving it a better spring, no, in, no upgraded catch, no upgraded, like just the spring, just the AR is removed, just fiddling with it, giving it a bigger spring, you could probably make this thing into a terrifying monstrosity of a cylinder-fed blaster that you'd actually want to use in a Nerf war. Contrary to something like this, which seems to be trying to do a very similar goal of being an eight-dart compact revolver-style blaster, which has a bolt handle for some specific reason, I don't really know, this blaster can't come anywhere near the same amount of quality and charm that the Firefly has. Plus, it's smaller. Plus, it doesn't look as good. But that's subjective. I need to review this thing anyway. So what do I think of the Firefly? This is one of the greatest blasters I've ever used, and I'm not making that up. I absolutely love this thing beyond all passable reasonable measure. And that's insane. 
because when I first like knew about this thing, I've known about the Firefly for a very long time. This was a blaster I had no interest in because everything I knew, it was basically just a Maverick, but it was a bullpup and it had a top prime. So it was like this and you couldn't really do anything with it. I was more interested in something like the Rapid Fire 20 because it was a full auto thing rather than being a Springer. And yes, this is an eight dart revolver Springer. That's massive. It's bigger than a Strife, it's bigger than a Raven, it's bigger than even an N-Series Sprinter, but oh my god, I love this blaster. I love this blaster a lot. I love this blaster a whole hell of a lot more than I thought I was going to, I'll tell you guys that much. I have no complaints. I have no complaints with the Ergo, I have no complaints with the style, I have no complaints with the internals, I have no complaints with anything that this blaster is doing. The only thing that I have to say about it are good things, because this is one of those few blasters that I genuinely can't find anything to complain about. It fits into the same category as something like the Nexus Pro X, where the job that it is trying to accomplish does it so so much better than everything else that tried to take its place. Think about it. When have you seen an 8-dart revolver in a similar style trying to do a similar job to the Firefly that came anywhere near this blaster? Let's review our options. We've got the Eagle Point. No. We've got the Elite Junior Rambler. Hell no. We've got the Dragon Power Ember Strike. No. And we've got the Dino Squad Armor Strike. What do you think? Nothing. Not even the Trailblazer. I would so much rather take this over a Trailblazer. And that thing's a tiny hammer action pistol. That thing is so much more practical than this in every way. For the job that this blaster is trying to accomplish, I give this the highest recommendation I possibly can because it is perfect in every way. This blaster, in my personal opinion, is perfect. No complaints with it whatsoever. If you find one of these things at thrift stores, online for cheap, anywhere, pick it up. Do yourself a favor. No Nerf collection is complete without one of these. That's my recommendation. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.